Friends, first of all, let me thank each one of these panelists who actually made to feel that AI is very simple. It is not complicated. It cannot be complicated than a CA code curriculum. And it's been very simple and subtly done with live examples every time on different aspects. Most of the time, people are thinking that the programs which are being conducted by ICI are focused on only practicing member. But this particular sessions, which we have done, were not for only practicing session, sessions, but also for the people who are working in industry, people who are decision makers, people who are business owners. They also have watched these videos and understood how simplified accounting, tax, and compliance can be. And that is a message which we try to give you all. Thank you, Chairman, sir, for giving the overview of activities of AI in ICI. And this is the first time the committee has been formed by ICI under the leadership of Daya, sir. Thanks to our President Ranjit, sir, and Charanjot Singh Ji, Nanda, sir. And uh, now, the terms, every panelist will be given 10 minutes to present the use case. And five minutes will be given for the juries to throw their queries, throw their uh, questions to the panelists. And they will have to give their answer so that they can justify their use case. Now, let's come up to the next thing. That is the our panelist, Sunny. Over to you, Sunny. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, you you can hear me, right? I'm audible. Yeah, you are audible. And tech team, please make him visible. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, Daya, sir. Thank you, Umay, sir, for giving me this opportunity to present uh, in the semi-final. Um, with that, let me start my presentation. My use case is mainly around uh, one topic, how to do research using AI, and also helping uh, practicing chartered accountants in drafting an appropriate advice for the client, which is thoroughly researched. So the use case is around research and helping uh, chartered accountants draft appropriate advice for their client using AI. With that, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, please just confirm once you're able to see my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay, the presentation is visible. Perfect. Uh, so, as I told you, uh, what I am going to talk about in next eight to seven, seven to eight minutes is about the use case of AI in research and drafting advice. My focus is on one of the topic of international taxation, which is pillar two, which I am doing a lot of research on this topic. But the the use case which I'm explaining can be adopted by participants in their day-to-day -day life if they are practicing GST, if they are practicing accounting principles, following financial accounting principles, or even for doing research in FEMA or any other topic of their practice. So what is important is the underlying concept of how AI can be used for research. I'm going to demo you using what I am doing in this area, which is relating to international tax and pillar two. Why did I started this? Uh, I was facing few challenges. Uh, when I talk about pillar two, there are a lot of rules. There are OECD model rule, there's OECD commentary, then there is administrative guidelines. Then there are certain domestic minimum tax rules which each country would adopt. All this culminated into thousands of pages of document by OECD. More than 138 countries have adopted pillar two or have agreed to adopt pillar two which means gradually there will be 138 different rules relating to pillar two by 138 different countries. All this has resulted into a lot of intertwining rules between pillar two, domestic rules, uh, financial accounting principles are also very integral part of pillar two. And then you also have transfer pricing in pillar one. It's like a concoction of all these things taken together. So to do a research, you need to ensure that you're not missing out any point or any section or any article when you write an advice to your client or when you're doing your research for writing a paper or when you're doing a research for doing 
client advice related work to ensure that uh, this tool can be very useful, which I have developed uh, using custom GPT. It does two things. One, uh, you can do a very quick and accurate research and uh, with the power of AI and with your own data. That's very important. When I'll give you a demo, I'll talk about it in the more detail. Using your own data, you can do the research very quickly and accurately. And second thing is, it not only helps you do the research and find out what the relevant text is or what the relevant section or article is, but it also helps you draft and advise for your client query. And that is a game changer. So these are the two important use cases from the bot that I have created using custom GPT. With that, let me now go to the demo of the solution. Before that, a very brief about this uh, technology, which is, uh, I'm going to switch my screen. Just can you confirm, is my screen visible? Uh, there will be custom GPT uh, screen, a web page. Yeah, visible, visible, go ahead. All right, thank you so much. Uh, now coming to this point on custom GPT, it is a, a RAG solution. Now what is RAG is a retrieval augmented generation where it combines your own data warehouse or a knowledge warehouse that you would create. Uh, it's an external data warehouse, which you would create your own warehouse of this data. And then it links with a large language model. And it could be, in my case, it is GPT Turbo 4 that I have linked with. So with the capability of GPT and my own data, I'm able to ensure that whatever research I'm undertaking and whatever advice I'm drafting using the AI are factually correct, contextually correct. And also this helps to improve the reliability of using an AI for your um, uh, practice related work because it's your own data. It's an authoritative information. Uh, so it's not a generic data pulled from web and then you get the response and you use it which could be very uh, risky sometimes because AI do hallucinate and a lot of situations have come across where it just makes up the answer, even if when it doesn't know. But when you create a rag based solution, which is trained on your own data, it wouldn't hallucinate. If it doesn't know the answer, it will simply not give an answer for that. So that's the important and beauty of the solution. You can train the model using your own data. With that, let me show you two examples. The first example is of, uh, I've already drafted the question for the sake of uh, uh, considering the paucity of time, I have already drafted some questions. So question one is relating to research. I want to do some research relating to stock-based compensation and how that stock-based compensation is treated under OECD pillar two. I want everything that is written on stock-based compensation with the proper reference from AI. With this question, the AI would then start drafting the response uh, with the proper references and uh, page number and article number reference. So here you could see that it has now started writing that you have an election option in the stock base. It is covered by article 3.2.2. It is at page number 87, of, sorry, sorry, para number 87, page number 61. This is the point from where this paragraph or this response is drafted. Similarly, para 91, page 61, treatment of expired option is started, and so on and so forth. So you have your own authoritative data to actually work on. It is not a generic data coming from the website. I'll show you the backend of how the data is data warehouse is created. Using that data, my bot is giving a response and it is giving me all the references. That's not the only thing. What you can also do is you can then go to where did you get the response? and click on this file, you will get the original source file as well, which is somewhere residing in your own warehouse. It will be picked from there so that you can do now more detailed research that this is the relevant document. And I know the relevant page number and para number, which is already mentioned over here. Like uh, take an example of para number 87, page number 61. So I know uh, I need to go to page number 61. Sorry, just one second, page number 61. And uh, it would have, so it's coming from para number 87, article 3.2.2. And this is the response which AI has provided to me. Now that's the uh, ease of doing faster research. You now don't need to go through all these thousands of pages, which you would see this is a very huge file 
228 pages and there are not there's just one file there are such eight to ten files that oecd has come and as i told you 138 countries have implemented pillar 2 or have agreed to implement pillar 2 so you can imagine another 138 countries regulation which runs into thousands of pages impossible humanly to do an accurate research and quickly uh, so using an ai can help you do that much faster so that's one use case where you get the responses with the Attention page para number and reference. Test. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, not only that, but you can also draft, uh, get an advice from the AI. And uh, let me show you the second question which I have created. Here I'm asking a question which is, I'm giving a context that this is the situation of my client, that its consolidated revenue is 600 million. Uh, and uh, as per OECD pillar two, pillar two is applicable only when uh, the threshold of 750 million euros is crossed, but here my client has prepared consolidated account only for nine months. Then how should I determine whether pillar two is applicable or not? So this is not any uh, research question that I'm asking. This is actual fact of my client. And I'm putting that as a question to the AI. With this, now the AI will understand the context. It will go back to the data, which is there in my data warehouse that I've created, and then it started drafting the responses. It's saying that you need to extrapolate it. And when you extrapolate it, it is crossing 750 million. And therefore, it should be covered by the pillar. Now, how can you create it? Quickly going by uh, over there, uh, you can simply create, there is this tool called as custom GPT uh, dot AI, and you can create your own data warehouse. By going over here, you have this data warehouse where you can load all your data. And that data, in my case, is all pillar two related data points. But that could be your customs, your FEMA, or any other topic of your area of practice, accounting standards. And then uh, you start training the model. You don't expect the bot to give the expected response immediately. But as you train it, it will understand what level of uh, granularity you want and what kind of responses are you expecting. You can correct the bot as well if it is going wrong. Second important thing is you can create its own persona. And uh, this is what uh, is very game changer, where you can actually make the bot work like a tax professional. So here I have created a persona of an international tax I'm professional. Sure. Okay, thank you. So that was a quick presentation of how you can use AI for research. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sunny, for your uh, beautiful two pillar theory and the uh, chat customized chat GPT model and OECD guidelines and documentation you have used. And uh, for the information, uh, uh, just a question to Sunny. Uh, last time you have presented the same use case? Yes. Okay. Because in semi-final, uh, in the discussions, we have requested every panelist also to have some enhancements and new use cases. So now over to you, Manu, sir. Thank you, Mesh Bhai. <clears throat> Sunny Ji, a nice presentation. And uh, again, I Thank think a uh, beautiful use of AI and uh, especially creating your own database. Uh, I think that would go a long way in removing the inherent defect of generic information being used by the GPT model. But one question, I think one sure. challenge you must be facing, I just want to know how you address that. The laws of various countries or the 148 odd countries which you mentioned, they yeah. keep on changing frequently. How do you ensure exactly. that your database is always up to date and the answer, because the answer will come from the database which you've provided. Exactly. If there is an yeah. intermittent change, how do you ensure yeah. that that change has been incorporated and you're not uh, giving the answer based on some uh, past year? Old, yeah. So uh, your point is very valid, sir. And this requires one to keep a tap on the developments that are happening globally. And being in this profession and doing this day in day out uh, typically we come to know with various uh, sources that are available and also uh, there are certain databases or subscription based models where you can come to know uh, which country has implemented where there has been a development or a new legislation and then uh, typically i go to that country's uh, legislation uh, website like so we uh, recently i updated hmrc uk uh, pillar 2 legislation in the solution for which I relied on a HMRC's uh, website for getting the data relating to Pillar 2. So yes, you need to have an update and understanding of what is the development in the regulation across the globe, which you need to keep a tap on. 
ओके सो मतलब यू आल्सो सब्सक्राइब टू द थ्योरी दैट चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स वुड नॉट बिकम रिडंडेंट बिकॉज देयर एक्सपर्टीज इन ट्राइंग टू एंश्योर दैट द करेक्ट डाटा इज इन प्लेस इज विल ऑलवेज बी रिक्वायर्ड एब्सोल्युटली सर एंड नॉट ओनली दैट बट आल्सो टू ट्रेन द एआई यू नीड टू बी अ सब्जेक्ट मैटर एक्सपर्ट बिकॉज लॉट ऑफ टाइम इट मे नॉट गिव यू इट मे गो इन अ रैबिट होल एंड कीप गिविंग यू द रॉन्ग रिस्पोंसेस यू नीड टू करेक्ट एंड ट्रेन द मॉडल एंड देन ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम इट लर्न्स सो uh yes it is not going to make us redundant it is just going to be an enabler for us thank you thank you sir uh, sunny here how you ensure to that uh, you incorporate the feedback from user or stakeholders into this project continuous all right so uh so uh, right now this is meant for my own internal use i am not uh, commercializing or not have even thought of commercializing it it's more for my own research more for my own advices or uh, doing a research for a client advice uh, it is not meant for a commercialization at this stage but uh, being in this profession i uh, i vouch for what is right and what is wrong so it's not 100% that i completely rely on what is coming out from the solution uh, it has to be verified from the real authentic source and that's where the capability of a research is really very helpful because you get the reference to the relevant source document and the page number and para number so that you can then do your own uh, deep dive and do more research on that topic uh, on your own as well and can, just can not we, relying on the ai can we do any score matrix to give the output file so that uh, how you validate the accuracy and the reliability of the output given by the project absolutely uh, that is possible and uh, this was one thing which i wanted to show after uh, as a part of my presentation is that this entire bot can be deployed it's this is at a back end what i showed you it can be deployed in your own website it could be deployed in your own web page and you can build a matrix whether like you can build something like if it is a giving you a good answer answer you give a thumbs up and then it learns that okay this is what is expected or you give a thumbs down when it uh, understands that it's not yeah. a right response you can do lot of things with that uh, yeah that was the last part which i wanted to show so it is completely deployable in your web page or website and then there's an api link for that and then you can also build in certain additional add-ons like uh, to understand how good the responses are and build that um uh, yeah. data that how accurately it is functioning great sunny great nice presentation appreciate very innovative thank you man thank you mayur sir the project you have one, one, one more very question nice. yeah please sure um sunny ji just one more question uh, could you yes, just sir. give a brief idea to all the viewers here about the time taken to build such a solution and what is the cost uh, implication sure so uh, the subscription for this custom gpt costs around 99 dollars a month and uh, it's a uh, monthly subscription you do have a lower version of the uh, subscription as well which costs 49 dollars a month so you have two plans and then third is a enterprise solution which is meant for a large companies to do something on the ai using their data which is which i think may not be required at this stage particularly the mid tier subscription is okay for a uh, practicing chartered accountant to use it for like 99 dollars a month uh, so effectively what we are talking is 1200 roughly uh, a year an annual cost for this uh, type of a tool and the time that has taken is uh, it is pretty quick uh, now it all depends upon how accurate data you have original and uh, that took me just final yeah. word it took me around 3 to 4 weeks to develop okay. the first model okay yeah so thank you thank you sunny for your presentation thank you sir